Welcome to my channel, my name is Olive. Today I have a 28 minute yoga flow for a small space. I wanted to make this one interesting where you move around the mat in a variety of different ways, but work within the space that you have. In terms of equipment, perhaps grab yourself a yoga block if you have one. We might use it at some points, we might not, but it's always best to have one just in case. We're gonna start practice standing up, so I will see you there and I hope you enjoy. We're gonna start with some WYs. So from a standing position, take your arms into a W shape and we're gonna squeeze the elbows down by the side into that W and then elevate the arms overhead, palms turning in for the Y. So again, down towards the side, W, overhead for Y. So what we're doing right now is just moving through our scapulas or our shoulder blades and just getting everything nice and warmed up. Try to keep the torso still for this. So we just move through the shoulders. Now what you can start to think about is closing down the fists, almost pulling a band down, squeezing, feeling a little bit more tension and then slowly releasing. Again, squeeze and pull down and then slowly release. Let's go one more and then release. All right, as the hands and the arms relax, from standing, take your arms across your chest. We're gonna come into some rotations for our thoracic spine. So standing upright, think about the hips being still. You're going to just start to create some circles into the top portion of your spine. So from the head towards the rib cage. Now these circles can be as big or as small as you would like them to be, but think about the spine rotating around sort of the midsection or the belly. So everything from the belly below is stuck, but everything else can move. Then change direction with it. Seeing any clicks, any creaks, what's going on here. It's all fine. It's just movement. It's just the body communicating with you. All right. Bring it back to the middle and let's release it there. So coming into some circular movements for our hips, you can do this standing and holding onto the wall or holding onto a chair. We're just gonna balance onto our right foot and with our left hip, we're just gonna start to draw some circles. Going forwards to the side and back, creating these loops, finding a little bit of balance onto the right leg. So as you can see, I'm kind of being quite sort of bouncy almost with the right leg. I'm not trying to hold it <laughs> super stiff. I'm allowing these circles to bring a little bit of a bend and change direction. It's just another way to find stability and work with all the little wobbles you might be feeling. And release, let's take it to the other side. So again, right leg finds the circles. Use your arms for a little bit of extra balance as well. So kind of having them off to the side to help compensate if you feel off center and change direction. Ooh. <laughs> all right. And then slowly release and shake it all out. Cool. So coming into our first section, make your way towards the top of your mat. We're gonna take our feet about hip distance apart, roll the shoulders back and down. And before we come into our flow, just take a moment, see how the balance feels in the body. If you were to rock side to side, what would it feel like into the ankles, the hips, the shoulders, the head? And then if we were to rock forwards and backwards again, what would that balance feel like in those same areas? And now can you find a position where you feel sort of balanced throughout the whole body? as the weight distributes evenly across the foot. And take a breath in here to exhale. Then on your next inhale, bend the knees, draw the arms above your head, coming into your chair pose. Your arms can be either above or straight out in front, or if you prefer them to center, you can take it there. And just as we start to settle into the movement, let's have a little wriggle here, side to side into the hips. We're starting to feel slightly different stretch to the glutes. And then pause, hold here for three. Using the breath, seeing what's going on for two. And then on one, draw your hands to center, straighten up through the legs, lift your left knee up towards your chest. We're gonna go from knee to chest pose, 
into warrior three. So tip the chest forwards, extend that leg behind you, hands can ooh, stay to center or go by your side. I'm gonna create a little loop. Come all the way back, knee to chest. And then when you're ready, back through your warrior three. Now you just keep moving between these two poses at your own pace, creating that loop, starting to build those pathways in the brain, observing what your breath does as we get more and more familiar with where we are taking the body. Beautiful. And then from here, the next time you bring your knee back to your chest, Hands can come back to centre. We're going to circle that left knee behind us. Step the foot down to the ground. Turn the toes to face the long edge. Straighten the front leg. Arms extend open. We're coming to a triangle pose. So before we do, we're going to start to reach as far forwards as we can with the right hand. Think about the hips moving backwards. Holding for a moment. Just feeling that stretch in the body. And then drawing that right hand either down to the thigh, the shin, the floor, or even on top of a block. Again, before we settle into the pose, just for a moment, just start to find some circles through your top hand. Circling back, up and over, just to get a bit of movement into that shoulder and into that torso. Beautiful. The next time that circle brings the arm overhead, let's keep it there for a few breaths. Checking in with your breath here, whether or not you need to change a position off that right arm or even the head, looking to whichever direction feels best for you and your body. Let's go one more breath here. And then from here, look down towards that right leg or right foot. We're gonna bend into that knee and then scoop the torso and shoulders up and over the hips into our warrior two position. So just before we come into it, let's just bend in and out off that front leg, just moving into the hips, moving into that knee. Lovely. And settle down here. From here, we're going to take that left hand by the belly, right hand reaches up as we lean backwards. Do a variation of Peaceful Warrior. And then swap the hands back forwards through Warrior Two. And then take the right hand by the belly, left hand overhead, a variation of Extended Angle. Again, circle back, leaning behind. So this is our second loop. Rolling forwards, then rolling back. Now, if you would like, you could maybe straighten that front leg as you lean backwards and then re-bend as you roll forwards. Just a couple variations to potentially play with. Maybe even the toes lift off the ground. Again, just see what you want to play, what you want to work with today. No right, no wrong. We'll go for it. One more breath. And then the next time, making your way through warrior two, circle your back hand forwards, land it down, pivot on the back foot, step into a down dog. Let's just have a moment here, wriggling the hips side to side, maybe giving the head a little nod. Beautiful. All right, looking forwards, walk or step or jump yourself to the top of your mat. You're gonna come straight back into our chair pose. So bend the knees, draw the hands up, again to center in front or overhead. Have again a little wriggle side to side into the hips. Beautiful. This time let's play with a variation. Again, hands, whatever. See if we can come up onto the balls of the feet. So finding the balance into the toes, getting the calves a little bit more involved, listening to all those little shakes in the body. I'm gonna breathe for two. Oh my God, drop the heel, come all the way up to standing. Lift the right knee 
in towards your chest and then tip it back into your warrior three. Again, circle it forwards, knee to chest, and then take it back. Just start to settle into the sequence on this side, seeing how wobbly we might feel, how we can use our arms to help us out. And again, as we get more and more familiar with these movement patterns, can we pay attention to how the poses feel, what our breath is doing. Okay. And then from here the next time, you bring that knee all the way back to your chest. We're gonna circle that leg behind, plant the foot down to the floor, straightening out our front leg. I have my back to you, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but from here we're gonna straighten out the arms. And then we're going to reach forwards with the left hand and just hold and pause there for a moment. Again, sort of noticing that stretch from the left hand to that right hip. And then take that left hand down the leg, reaching your right arm up into the air to then find some of those circles. Circling the right arm up, overhead and back. Finding those additional bits of movement through the shoulder and through the torso. And the next time that arm is overhead, let's keep it there. Feel free to change a position off your left hand, wherever you would like it to stay. And whilst we hold the pose still, just noticing the breath, noticing any stretch sensation into the body. Breathing for two. And then looking down towards your front foot, your left foot, bend into the knee, bring the shoulders above the hips, back to our warrior two. And again, we're gonna bend in and out off that front leg. Finding a bit of maneuverability for the knee and the hip. And then settling down there for a moment. Bring the right hand by your belly, left hand reaches backwards, leaning towards the back of your mat. Swap the hands through center, warrior two. Left hand by the belly, right arm reaches over. Variation of extended angle. Circle it backwards. To then circle it forwards. And again, remember as you start to settle into this loop, Perhaps play with straightening that front leg as you lean behind. Or maybe even lifting the toes. Or if there were ways that you started to move that I've not necessarily cued, go for it. Because everyone's going to have perhaps a slightly different idea of where to take the movement, where to take their body. Go for two more breaths. And then back for your warrior two. Back hand circles down, land the hand, step back into your down dog. Let's have a little wriggle here. A moment to check in with the breath. Okay. So coming into our next sequence from your downward facing dog, we're going to lift that right leg off the ground. We're going to start with a loop. So from our three legged dog, we're going to bring that right knee and shin down to the floor as if I'm in tabletop. And then from here, I drop that left heel, peel open my left hand ooh, up to the ceiling through to my gate pose. This bottom foot can either be again directly behind the knee or you can pivot it round towards the back. And then I'm going to land my top hand, roll into the ball of my left foot, kick back into three-legged dog. Let's go again. So again, knee and shin come down. I can sweep the foot behind as I peel my left hand to the ceiling. Just looping in and out of these two poses at your own pace. And I'm going to give you some options to continue your exploration. Maybe instead of 
three-legged dog, we come to split dog, where we bend the knee, rotate the hips towards the right-hand side. Maybe as we come down to gate, if you would like, you could play around with maybe lifting that left leg. You could keep it there, or you could hug the knee forwards, or you could hug the ankle behind. Get a bunch of different things to continue playing with. See where you want to go for the next couple of breaths. Beautiful. Now the next time you're in your gate pose, let's stay there for just a moment before bringing your shoulders up and above your hips. From here, we're going to turn our left toes to face the back of the mat, and we're gonna bend that knee. So coming into like a kneeling version of extended angle, option is to either take the left elbow on top of the knee, or to maybe bring it down towards the ground or on top of a block. Or if you're comfortable with binds, you can take that hand underneath the right arm to match behind. Either way, we're gonna hold into this pose here, going for a few breaths. And what I quite like about this pose is it's a really nice, gentle side bend, where we can focus on the breath into our right rib cage. Now, if you're in that bind, I want you to think about squeezing those shoulder blades together. So we're not just sort of pulling <laughs> the joints and the sockets into a position, we're using those muscles. Okay, one more breath. And slowly bring it all the way upright. From here, we're going to circle round, hands to the ground, face forwards. Lift the right knee in, reset and land it down into pigeon. We're gonna have a little play with our second loop through a pigeon fold and then some active pigeons. So for this, I would tuck your back toe. We're gonna start by creeping the hands away and forwards. Maybe you fold all the way down, see what it feels like. And then as you walk the hands back in, you're going to actively push into the front knee, push into the back leg, start to lift the chest away from the ground. Maybe the fingers stay or maybe we're able to lift. Sometimes it's nice to even lift that back knee off the floor and then release, slowly walk it forwards into your fold. So again, just swapping, just playing between these two positions, finding that engagement in the lower body and then softening in the fold. If you would like, as you come up into the active pigeon, see if you want to challenge it and maybe take the arms up and overhead and then soften. Let's go for one more breath here, wherever we are. And then reset, walk the hands all the way back in. We're going to drop our butt down towards the right hand side. Swing your left leg all the way to the front. We're going to plant both feet down onto the floor, coming into a forward fold. For this, you're welcome to sit on a block to just elevate the hips, if that is nice and comfortable for you. But from here, we're gonna focus on this forward fold for the hamstrings. So just start to slowly walk the hands forwards, really allowing a round into the spine. You might find that walking the hands down the legs or eventually holding the feet to then slowly draw you in, your preferred way. Or if you use a strap, we could strap it around the soles of the feet and then creep down. Either way, I just want this one to be as quote unquote relaxed as possible. Forward folds can feel very intense at the best of times. But we're just seeing what this one feels like particularly for the hamstrings and the calves. We're gonna take two more breaths here. And slowly roll it all the way up, have a little roll. Cross the legs in, come forwards into your downward facing dog and have a little wriggle here. So as you do, I am just gonna turn around so that I don't have my back to you this time. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so from our downward dog, let's move into the other side. We're gonna start with the left leg reaching back into our three-legged dog. And then as the shoulders come over the wrists, left knee and shin to the floor, drop that right heel, maybe swing the left foot behind you as you peel that right hand open. And then again, hand comes down, kick it all the way back, three-legged dog. Roll it forwards, knee and shin to the floor, spin, peeling into your gait. And again, just resetting, just moving between these two poses. Remember in our gait, we can play around with lifting the right leg, hugging the knee forwards, catching the knee behind. And we could even look at our split dog. So rotating the hips to the left hand side. So go for two more breaths. So the next time you come down into your gate, just holding there for a moment. And then bringing shoulders up and over the hips. You're gonna turn your right foot to face the back and then bend that leg, plant the foot down to the floor. All right, so again, our options, right elbow on top or right fingers to the ground or on top of your block or coming into your bind, hands reaching behind you. See which one you want to work with. And then as we come into our hold, this time we focus on our breath in our left rib cage. One thing in terms of the breath is that it always moves to the area of least resistance. So right now, because that portion of my body is in a really nice extended stretch position, it'll be easy to go there, but it'll be quite hard for it to move into the right rib cage because it's all compressed. Beautiful. Go one more breath here. And slowly push, come all the way back up. So hands down towards the ground, turn onto the balls of the right foot, scoop your left knee in, land it down into your pigeon. So again, let's have that back toe tucked. Let's start the other way around this time. So start to walk the fingers back, push into the front leg, back leg, See if we can lift the hands away for our active pigeon. And then take it all the way down into your forward fold. Again, moving all the way up, finding your lift. And then release, walk it all the way out. So again, a few variations if you would like. Maybe when we lift, see if we can lift that knee or maybe even the arms above the head. Ooh. Beautiful, let's go one more breath. Okay. And then as you release from here, we're gonna slowly drop the hips down to the left-hand side, swing that right leg forwards and give them both a little shake out. So last time we did the forward fold focusing on the hamstrings. This time we're gonna do it and focus on the spine. So bend both feet, plant them down to the ground. You can either just sort of like hug the arms on top. My personal favorite is to hug the arms underneath and then drop my chin down to my chest. So we're removing the hamstrings from the picture and instead focusing on the fold in the spine, rounding from the back of the head down to the tailbone. If you prefer having the hands on the ground, they can be inside or on the outside of the legs. But thinking about the breath into this space again, And go one more breath here. And now as you slowly come all the way up, have a little wriggle, hands go behind, scooch the butt down. Let's lie on our back, bring our knees into our chest and have a little rock side to side. 
And then take both knees down to the right with your left arm reaching into that cactus shape. Maybe letting the eyes come down to a close. And then take the legs all the way over to the other side. And then back all the way through the middle into a happy baby. So feet up to the ceiling, hold on to the feet or the ankles or whatever. And a little rock side to side. Then from there, let's come briefly into Shavasana. So just planting the feet either down onto the floor, hands resting by your side, or let the legs straighten out your choice. I am going to be quiet in this Shavasana, but what I want you to think about is taking inhales through the nose. And really long exhalations from the nostrils. So really just focusing on the exhales for a minute or so, just to really bring the body into the rest and digest state of the nervous system. As you breathe here, soften through the jaw, the shoulders, down to the feet. Taking three more rounds of breath here. And then slowly start to move into the fingers and the toes, wrists and the ankles. Eventually bring your knees into your chest and rocking yourself side to side. Roll over to the right or the left, slowly pushing up into a seated position. And palms together, rub the hands, cupping them over the eyes. Take a breath in. To exhale. And then slowly bring yourself back into the space. I really hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below and any thoughts for future flows as well. Give me a shout in the comments. All right, see you next time. Bye.